What's going on, everybody? It's time for your morning ice. I'm Tommy C, host of In the Crease of Tommy C. And as you can see, I got no partner over here. And I'm going to talk about serial sexual harassing of, well, hockey bloggers um, around the hockey blogging community, something I touched on yesterday. But um, I don't think it was a really good idea because Shot from the Point Live is a little more lighthearted. And uh, I wanted to touch on it today on a little bit of a solo show. And as some of you might know, three hockey bloggers have lost their employment um, uh, based on accusations of serial sexual harassing of female hockey bloggers on the, uh, the internet, inside the hockey community, whatever you want to call it. I pretty much read mainstream hockey articles. I'm not terribly interested in, in freelance um, or independent journalists. Uh, so I really i am not up to speed on who's good, who's not. I don't really have an opinion because I'm not terribly interested in what they have to say. Um, and I don't think you really need 12 sources um, to do the type of show that I do. I'm neither a journalist nor am I interested in being one. First one, Adrian Datter. Adrian Datter uh, is a former beat reporter for the Denver Post. Um, and uh, he covered, of course, the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, he was recently exposed as being a serial sexual harasser uh, when tweets were released or screenshots of tweets were released by one Maria Camacho. Uh, she apparently is a hockey blogger inside of Calgary. Um, I, for one, don't believe that these tweets amount to serial sexual harassment. Uh, you can go down and click on the, the description box below. I'll put all the articles below and decide for yourself. One of the reasons that I don't believe uh, Ms. Camacho, uh, she said she was scared. She said that, uh, um, I don't know what she was scared of. Was she scared of Adrian Datter? He lives in Denver. And, uh, um, well, I guess maybe she was afraid of him coming up uh, to Denver to cover the avalanche. Or was she scared of, of the response? Well, I don't believe any of that. And when she was applauded for releasing these tweets, she was on Twitter responding to absolutely everybody. Uh, so I don't really think she was too concerned with the outcry or the potential criticism she may take for releasing these tweets a year after the fact. I don't believe it. I don't believe you, Ms. Camacho. I think you're disingenuous. I think you're dishonest. And I think you have a political agenda more than likely. Now, Dadder, what did Dadder do to ask for this? Uh, why were these tweets dug up? Well, I have a theory, not proof. Uh, Dadder in... October, I want to say, referred to a hit as a pussy play. Now, we all know the word pussy is a bad, bad, evil word, and it's not really in tune with uh, the whole political correctness thing we got going on, and it's probably pretty unprofessional words by somebody in a prestigious position like the Denver Post or being a beat writer for a National Hockey, team, hockey League team. Again, not defending any of these guys' professionalism, uh, either Harrison Mooney or Adrian Dadder. Uh, I'm actually just defending uh, the fact that I think they're being unfairly marked as creeps. Now, Dadder said this, and then two months later, uh, these tweets is, were released a year after the fact, and it looks to me like he's being punished for wandering off the plantation of political correctness. He has been properly punished. Now, why do I care? It looks like a case of liberals eating liberals, and uh, they seem to be doing this to their own, and uh, normally I wouldn't care. Now, whatever disagreements I might have with uh, 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 Adrian Datter or Harrison Mooney, for that matter, I don't think it's right, even if I disagree with them, that they'd be tarred in this matter of being creeps. Uh, I think uh, in Datter's case, it's probably an issue with his wife. Should he be talking to girls like that on the internet? Probably not. But serial sexual harassment? I thought sexual harassment was repeated unwanted sexual advances. Now, in these tweets, he asked for pictures. Uh, he's never told, and he's to, to, to knock it off. He's, um, and we're only really seeing bits and pieces of conversation. So if there is more information on data being a se sexual uh, uh, serial harasser uh, or a predator, then I will absolutely throw him under the bus for it. But from the evidence that I've seen thus far, that's not the case. He's rude, and there are a bunch of dating fails at worst. I don't know why a guy would hit on a girl on Twitter, um, but that doesn't, say, doesn't necessarily make him a serial sexual harasser. I believe that he was disposed of 
because the type of language that he chooses to use. That leads me to Harrison Mooney. Harrison Mooney over the summer was fired from Puck Daddy. He, he was uh, um, really in the driver's seat in the hockey blogging wor world working for Yahoo Sports, where one Jen Camacho re released a group of tweets um, that were pretty much the same thing. Dating fails and rudeness. Um, I think, again, Mooney acted unprofessional. But he does he really deserve the title of sexual harasser? Or a serial sexual harasser? No, I don't think so. Not really sure what Mooney did, because he's a really, really good liberal. But he apparently pissed off the wrong people. Now, I wonder, I really wonder, if there's an agenda to sort of expose or hurt male hockey bloggers. I seen there seems to be a lot more um, feminist activism. Um, inside the gaming community, especially in, or not, excuse me, <laughs> I made a slip, the gaming community, inside the hockey, blo hockey blogging community. I really don't think that any of these tweets result to true sexual harassment. And just the simple fact, in all cases, we're only getting part of the conversation. Now, I made a Freudian slip before, and uh, about, I, I referred to the hockey blogging community as gaming community. And I really wonder if we don't have a similar situation going on there. Now, what's Gamergate and what's going on in the gaming community? Um, well, I'll tell you. Initially, I was told uh, that Gamergate is a situation where um, females are being uh, discriminated against, um, sexually harassed, um, threatened uh, by gamers uh, because apparently males don't want girls in the gaming community. So it didn't look very interest, interesting to me. Upon further review, after I finally just looked it up and got interested in it, it really has to do with gaming journalism. Uh, there was a situation where a female game developer who's also connected to the feminist movement uh, had a sexual relationship with a powerful person inside the gaming journalism community. That person, her ex-boyfriend, was promoting her projects on uh, a site called Taka Takaku or something like that. This is stuff that doesn't normally interest me. The gaming community exploded with this impropriety and this real lack of journalism ethics inside of gaming. Now, you might be saying to yourself, who cares if there's bad journalism ethics inside of gaming? You're right. Who cares? But that's not what was interesting. The narrative was successfully changed to sexual harassment of women, even though that's not where this started. So what they did is they concentrated on all the trolls who wrote horrible things uh, and uh, proved that this was a problem of sexual harassment when it really was a criticism about impropriety and ethics in gaming journalism. That narrative, unfortunately, has been successfully changed. Um, it seems that these women have taken no responsibility, including gaming journalists, have taken no responsibility for their lack of journalism ethics. It was also discovered in Gamergate that journalists from competing game media outlets were actually in a Google group talking about how to defend the people that were actually involved in this controversy. They weren't talking about cleaning up their ranks. They weren't talking about ending, um, you know, boyfriends helping girlfriends gaming projects. They decided to turn the narrative to sexual harassment on the internet. This uh, gaming Google group was sort of like journo list if you're familiar with that and it was called something uh to the effect of pro gaming journalists these guys from competing companies competing companies were actually using coordinated attacks against people that were interested in cleaning up gaming journalism obviously gaming journalism is 150 percent corrupt from the top down This makes me wonder out loud if gaming or feminist journalists inside hockey community are in groups together to destroy or discredit male hockey journalists. Now, I don't have any evidence of this. I'm just posing the question. Um, these attempts seem organized. Uh, like I said, Ms. Camacho's tweets were a year after the fact. Uh, the tweets that Harrison Mooney posted were rude at best, dating fails at worst. Uh, they certainly didn't amount to serial sexual harassment. Is there an organized movement to discredit male hockey bloggers? Again, this is liberals eating liberals, so what do I care? But I got to be honest with you, 
I guess I do care because I'm making a stupid video about it. I want to know if there is a journal list, if there is a video game journal pro list for female and feminist hockey bloggers. Why do I think they're organized attempts? Because the evidence is so weak against two out of the three of these hockey bloggers. It does seem organized. I don't believe Jen Ramos very simply because of the article she wrote, which I'm putting in the description box below. She exposed Harrison Mooney and then reveled in it and talked about her lack of safety being a hockey fan, which is ridiculous, is absolutely ridiculous. Females are in no danger, more, more danger being a hockey fan than everybody else. And saying that females are in danger just basically shows that they have a narrative that basically all men involved in hockey or toxic male masculinity are a danger to society. That's one theme I seem to be seeing more and more, that absolutely all male behavior is primarily evil and it needs to be stopped. And I wonder if we have a si similar situation. They're getting to people that are in their circle. They're not gonna get to somebody like me because I would never be involved in their circle. So you as a guy, and especially a liberal guy, if you know these people, here's my recommendation. Stay away from them. If you hear people use words like patriarchy or rape culture, I would just get the hell out of town. I wouldn't be rude. I uh, wouldn't say sexually demeaning things, but I would move on. I think some of these feminists are not for equal rights. I think they're behaving like brown shirts. I think uh, they have a totalitarian ideology. And they are best to be avoided. Don't talk to them. Don't deal with them. And if you have any information that there is some sort of conspiracy, release it. Take a screenshot of it. Leak it. Because this is wrong. If there are groups of radical feminist women, and I say radical feminist and not women, because I don't think most women subscribe to this sick ideology, um, expose them. They're trying to hurt people. They're trying to destroy people. Again, I'm going to repeat. I don't have any evidence that any of these folks uh, are conspiring against hockey bloggers. I just wonder, because I know it's going on in the gaming community, uh, it's absolutely 100% a fact. It's not a JFK magic bullet theory. It's not a grassy knoll. It's not 9-11 uh, was an inside job. Uh, there are gaming journalists conspiring against people trying to expose unethical behavior inside gaming journalism. Now, is there a similar conspiracy to kind of place all men or people that are involved in sports or sports writing as bad, evil men? Um, I don't know that for a fact, but I think if you have information, I think you have an obligation to expose it. Because every time a guy goes to hit on somebody and it doesn't work out, it'll be saved like Maria Camacho did and used when necessary. Sort of like a ticket, uh, uh, a go to jail card, so to speak, whenever you wander off to the political correctness ranch. I don't want to see this happen to people. I don't particularly like Harrison Mooney's views on hockey. I don't particularly like some of the things that he has to say or he believes. But I did talk to him privately one time, and I think he's generally a good person. He's decent, and he didn't deserve that. Nobody deserves that. I wouldn't trust these girls. When they use language like that, when they're involved with far-left agendas, I'm not talking about your typical liberal. If they're involved with far-out uh, um, wingnut type ideology, they are to be avoided, not to be worked with, not to be chatting about hockey, and certainly not asking for their pictures on the Internet. It's not very smart. At the same time, I don't like to see good people get destroyed just because they might disagree with me politically. I think it's wrong. But I think the people you're dealing with don't feel that way. I think they have an agenda. I think they're looking to hurt people, permanently hurt people. I think they're looking to change male culture, some, some of which is very innocent. People that talk that way, whether you're a hockey journalist or not, patriarchy, rape culture, outrageous things like that, they are to be avoided like Ku Klux Klansmen and neo-Nazis because it's just as radical. It's just at a different end of the spectrum. Avoid them. Stay away from them. They're bad people. This show and this channel will continue to be as politically incorrect as possible. It will never bow to any kind of radical feminism or any radical ideology for that matter. 
We're going to continue to be guys in this channel. We're going to continue uh, to act like jerks and act silly. And no one's going to come in and tell us to do anything different. Thank you. It's Tommy C. And I'm out.